Hi, we're at Indo-Pacific 2025 in Sydney, Australia, and I am now on the booth of Shield AI. We're standing beside a full-scale model of the VBAT uh, unmanned air system, and we're meeting with Mike Hanlin, Senior Director, International Business Development at Shield AI. Mike, great to meet you. Thanks, Xavier. Pleasure to be here. Thank you very much. So what can you tell us about uh, VBAT? I understand it's uh, UAS has been around for a number of years now, but uh, earlier this year you shared uh, announcements about uh, regarding a couple new end users in Asia. Sure, yeah, so VBAT's a low-cost, long-range, runway-independent uh, drone that essentially does search and target acquisition in denied, degraded, intermittent, and latent environments, or DDIL. Um, as you can see here, it's it kind of looks like a SpaceX rocket. It just takes off exact, exactly as you see it, completely unassisted. Uh, some of the biggest enhancements we have in our next gen is it's SATCOM capable, so you essentially have unlimited range, completely unassisted launch and, uh, launch and recovery. That's what the new legs do. Um, but one of the biggest differentiators of VBAT is that it's proven in combat in the GPS denied and comms contested environments. Uh, we've been operating in Ukraine uh, pretty much the entire of the, entirety of this year. I should say the Ukrainians are operating the VBATs themselves with uh, exceptional success. Um, and then in the maritime domain, it's actually, I think about 90% of our operations have been on board ships or in that type of environment. Uh, the Japan Maritime Self-Defense Force announced their first ever shipborne ISR platform is VBAT, so they've actually taken delivery of those aircraft. And then we've got quite a few customers across the other regions in the Middle East, uh, Europe, South America, et cetera. So great success across the board with a focus on maritime. So for uh, Navy end users, for sailors at sea, what makes uh, VBAT different compared to your other UAAs out there? What's the key differentiator for VBAT? Yeah, I'd say a couple things. One, it's a super small expeditionary platform, so you can tuck this away in the hangar on the side and still operate everything that you need to. It's also one of the safest aircraft out there. If you look down there, you'll see that the propeller is completely enclosed, so there's no risk of any sort of an injury, especially with it being completely unassisted uh, launch and land recovery. It also, because of the true VTOL nature, is allowed to operate on decks with helicopters and other expensive equipment, so you do not sacrifice any of your manned capability while adding uh, a superior unmanned capability on board your vessels. Right. Uh, Mike, another major uh, piece of news you shared recently, I believe two weeks ago, you came out with the new XBAT. Uh, can you tell us more about this from a naval perspective? Sure. Uh, we're super excited about XBAT. It's the world's first AI piloted VTOL fighter jet or strike aircraft. Um, we announced it two weeks ago, did a major unveiling. Super excited about the progress that we've made. Um, it's actually not a really new concept as far as the VTOL capability. There was a a program in the 50s called the X-13 VertiJet uh, that successfully proved the capability. The problem was it didn't have powerful enough engines and it required a human pilot to land in a very challenging environment. We've solved both of those problems. We actually announced our partnership with GE to integrate their F-110 engine that has 30 million uh, proven flight hours. So we solved that problem and then because of our AI pilot or mission uh, AI enabled autonomy called Hivemind, we no longer require a human pilot. So those problems are solved. Additionally, our uh, senior vice president for engineering came from SpaceX and he was the lead engineer on the Falcon 9 program, which adds a ton of capability from that perspective. So super excited about it. Um, from a maritime perspective, navies all around the world are generating great interest because it enables that CCA type of capability for their services where the traditional runway required would not enable that. So significant interest around the world for that. Super excited about it. We'll go to first flight tests on the VTOL capability in 2026, first on-wing flight in 2028, and then initial operating capability and production in 2029. All right, Mike, thank you very much. Thank you very much, appreciate the time. We are now with uh, Seth Fireman. He's the Maritime Domain Program Manager at HiveMind Solutions. Seth, good morning, great to meet you. Great to meet you too, Xavier. Can you please first tell us about HiveMind, what is it? HiveMind is Shield AI's AI mission autonomy platform. It's an architecture composed of writing the autonomy as well as testing and executing it on the edge for robotic platforms. HiveMind started as a product for aviation platforms. Um, that's where our company is based in the aviation domain. And with the extensibility of HiveMind, we've been able to extend it into the maritime domain recently with our partnership with HII. 
Okay, so uh, Seth, please tell us more. Uh, so you made an announcement during uh, the SCI UK back in September regarding that partnership with HII. And here during uh, Indo-Pacific, you announced a further, uh, made a further announcement with HII to tell us all about it. Absolutely. So at DSCI in the UK in September, we announced this new partnership with HII where we were going to bring uh, HiveMind uh, Enterprise SDK into the maritime world with the Romulus and the Remus platforms. Um, since that partnership announcement just two months ago, we took HiveMind and we have actually tested it on the water with HII on the Romulus USV. Getting that autonomy to tie the two Odyssey, Odyssey platform autonomy product, the hive my mission autonomy product so quickly and to actually be able to test and show it's really working. We still have more work to do, but the speed and the scale at which we've done this, we find to be extremely exciting. And that's what the end user wants nowadays, right? They want really fast uh, development cycles uh, in order to field uh, as soon as possible the, the end product. Absolutely, to try to get real behaviors out there and tested. The, the behaviors we're doing with HiveMind will be Colrex compliant as we extend our partnership with HII, and we're really excited to see how these autonomous mission behaviors can, can really make a huge impact in the USVs and, and future in the UUVs for navies around the world. So those tests, I understand, they took place off uh, Virginia Beach, uh, Virginia. Uh, what's next for the project? Absolutely. Well, we'll be doing more testing. We'll be extending, expanding our behaviors and, and driving a deeper integration for all portions of the HiveMind product from the, uh, from the behavior development to the testing to the execution at the edge. Uh, you'll just have to stay tuned for what's next. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you.